All right, great morning. Welcome, everyone. I want to send uh, greetings to you this morning. God bless you. I want to say uh, happy, happy Wednesday to you. It is Wednesday. Wednesday, the 4th of December. I want to send greetings to you on this uh, wonderful Wednesday morning. I believe it's Wednesday morning. We bless you uh, for joining me this morning. I want to say uh, happy Wednesday to everyone. As you tune in with me, greetings. Welcome to the Revelation Moment for this uh, wonderful Wednesday. Uh, greetings, everybody. As you're tuning in with us, uh, this is Pastor Jay. As always, do me a favor, invest, invite, involve somebody in the broadcast this morning. Good morning, family, as you tune in. Welcome to the Revelation Moment uh, Facebook group. As you tune in with us this day, this is the day as always, that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Wherever you're tuning in from, let us know. If you're watching for the first time, uh, greetings to you this morning. Good morning, everybody, as you tune in from the north, the south, the east, uh, the west, in a warm climate, in a cold climate, uh, wherever you are this morning, welcome. It's good to be on with you. If you're watching this recording at a later time, and you are tuning in for our replay. Good morning, everybody. As you tune in, uh, do me a favor. Go ahead and share if you care. Become a shareholder, an investor in this broadcast. Invest in your timeline. Uh, be a blessing to someone that is listening, somebody that is tuning in, uh, somebody that needs and um, is expecting a word from the Lord today. Are you expecting this morning? I'm expecting, always expecting. That's why I'm here. But greetings to you if you are on your way to work, if you are in the gym, if you are on your way to the gym, if you're in the car, if you need to go to the gym, uh, we say greetings to you as always. Uh, we bless God for uh, you today. We thank you so much as you tune in with us. Let us know where you're watching from. As always, if you are on your way to work, uh, we're praying with you and praying for you. And uh, we thank God for this season. It is a season not just of increase, but a season of multiplication. Uh, we're believing that God will make you multiply in all that you do, that God will increase you, that he will stretch you, that he will expand you, uh, that he will cause your metron to go beyond uh, your measure. Sometimes you can only measure uh, in the natural, but when God has something for you supernatural, he will cause your metron to expand, to explode, uh, to burst forth. And so we just want to do that this morning in your life, in your spirit, in your family. As you're watching and tuning in, we're praying for you while you're here uh, watching us live. We're praying for uh, all of your family and all of your friends as you tune in again. Uh, let's get some folks on this morning. It is 6.33 a.m. Eastern Time, and this is Revelation Moment, where we're praying with you, praying for you. I am Pastor Jay. We bless you. Uh, for being a part of the broadcast this morning. If you are tuning in and you have been encouraged by the broadcast, let us know. If you see somebody that you know in the group, say hey to them. Give them an emoji. Give them a hug. Give them a heart. Give them a thumbs up. Uh, we welcome you as you're tuning in. Let's go. Let's go. Let's get some people on. Let's host a watch party. Where are all the watchers this morning? All the watchers on this Wednesday. Let's host a watch party. Let's get them tuned in. Great morning. Uh, to you as you tune in with us. Uh, happy to be here. Uh, happy to be with you. And it is Wednesday. I don't know um, where you are right now. If you're on your way, if you are on your way to work, if you're on your way um, off of work, if you're getting off work, wherever you are, welcome. Uh, Dallas, uh, those in the Central Standard and Pacific uh, standard time. Those that are watching in different time zones, thank you so much for pressing in early this morning. It is truly an honor and a privilege. Thank you so much, Alpha, uh, for jump starting that watch party again. This is Pastor Jay, and this is your revelation moment for this Wednesday, December the fourth. I'm excited about what God is doing in your life. Uh, we're always praying with you, always praying for you. It is truly a privilege and an honor to come onto your timeline, to come into your life. Uh, to have you agree with us. Uh, God is growing the group. We are almost at 1,300. I think we're about 20 people away. Uh, welcome, Iris. God bless you from Texas. All of the people from Texas, we thank you so much for tuning in. 
in joining us. We are truly um, blessed by your presence, and we pray that God bless you today. Thank you so much. Yes, pray for me. Thank you for blessings. Uh, for me and my family, always need prayers, always expect prayers. I believe uh, prayer is important in this season, so pray for me as I pray for you. Uh, we thank God uh, for the opportunity to, to wake up every day and to just encourage and motivate and uh, give you something from the Lord. It takes a lot. It takes a lot of seeking uh, to find out what God is saying, I'm telling you. Uh, and so as we do this, we do this as unto the Lord, but we do this uh, through his revelation. We do this through his impartation for you today. That's what we do. We come here, revelation. We come here in revelation moment to impart into you. And so that's why every day we don't do this uh, outside of a group, but we want to pray and pray with you. And that's right, Lisa. Prayer is the key. And so we want to unlock this morning destiny inside of you. We want to unlock the will of God inside of you. We want to unlock the mysteries of God. You know, I, I've come to realize there are some things that you can never do uh, without prayer. And that's everything. <laughs> uh, not just some things, but everything you cannot do. And so it is important that you make prayer a priority. If you don't know how to pray, get a book that have prayers in it. Read those prayers till you know how to pray. If you don't like reading, get you some audio prayers. Go to YouTube. Just put in Dr. Cindy Trim and let some prayers. Just put in prayers. Just learn how to pray. And so we want to cultivate this morning. We want to cultivate your atmosphere. Um, because when two or more come together and touch and agree, there he is in the midst. And we know that faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. And we like to pray the word of God. We like to pay, pray back the promises of God. Why? Because the promises of God are yes and amen. And he said, remind me daily. Remind me of my promises. And so, Father, we come this morning. You said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto us. And so this morning, we thank you for this morning of addition and multiplication and increase. Father, I thank you for some uh, as they are on their way to work or as they are at work. God, that you are increasing, increasing knowledge, increasing favor. But most of all, increasing your love in their lives. And so I pray this morning um, that wherever you are, as you tune in, as you watch, that you experience the agape love, the unconditional love, the love that God says, no matter where you are, you still belong to me and you are accepted into the beloved. And so this morning, we pray by lifting up the name of Jesus. We lift up, we magnify, we exalt the name that is above every name. How many of you know his name is Yeshua? His name is Yahweh. His name is Jehovah. Let me let you know, every name of the Lord, every name of the Father is nothing but a characteristic in your life. And so whatever you call him, um, that's what he is to you this morning. And so we believe today. In Jesus name that you're coming into the revelation of who he is in your life in this season, in this moment, in this time. And so, Father, I pray right now for every person that is watching. I lift up every home. I thank you, Father God, Lord, that you're moving, that you're shifting, that you're causing things to break forth today in your presence and in your power, because in your presence is the fullness of joy. So I pray this morning for joy, unspeakable joy. Lord, we thank you for pouring out the oil of joy on this broadcast, on your people. Lord, I pray for those that are watching. Lord God, in every season uh, that is accumulated here today, some of us may be going in and some of us may be going out. But whatever it is, we declare that there is a blessing upon your life. We thank you, Father God, for the spirit of sonship. We thank you for the, for the spirit of commitment. Lord, as we commit to you, you, as we commit our day, as we commit our way, Lord, we thank you for seeking you. Lord, anoint our eyes today to see you. Anoint our ears today to hear you. Anoint our hands that everything that we put our hands to, that they will cause prosperity and blessing. Father, I come in Jesus name and I come against every assignment of the enemy today. Father, we put our mind on you. We put our mind on things above. We put our minds on your glory and on your power. And so we thank you that there is nothing that the enemy can do against us, around us, about us. And so we declare a blood covering around homes, families. We declare a blood covering 
around every business today, a blood covering around every car. If you're in your car this morning, we pray for divine safety. We pray for divine protection. We call forth every ministering angel from the four corners of the earth to be with you, to be assigned to you, to stand on your behalf, to war for the host of angels to war on your behalf this morning. I pray today. Oh, glory in Jesus name that God will show himself strong for you, that he will show himself strong and mighty, mighty in battle, that you will be an overcomer, that you will be a conqueror, that you will be the head, that you will be above only and not beneath, that he will begin to bless you. For the Lord says this very clearly in his word that he gives you power to get wealth. So we declare that beloved in all things that you prosper. In your health, in your body, in your finances, in your ministry, in your job, in your work, all that God has given you to do, may it be as unto the Lord. And we declare that you will be consistent and persistent. I pray for those that feel like giving up this morning. Don't give up. God has not stopped. He's not finished. He's just beginning. So we pray that you would press toward the mark of a higher calling, of a higher assignment, of a higher mantle. May God begin to increase you in your revelation of who he is. For he is God and he is not a man and he shall not lie. And so I declare that every lie of the enemy of this season, every form of deception, every form of lies from the pit of hell, we bind them this morning and we loose truth. We loose the anointing to destroy yokes, yokes of bondage, yokes of poverty, yokes of infirmity. We declare that by the stripes of Jesus Christ, the Bible says you are healed. So we pray this morning for divine healing in your mind, your body, your spirit. We pray for your sons, your daughters. I want to pray for those that may have family members or you may have some psychological stuff going on in your brain. Let this mind be in you, in you, on you, in you and around you with, with which was in Christ Jesus. Let your thoughts be his thoughts. Let your ways be his ways. And I pray that you are consumed in your thought pattern with the love of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you for delivering, saving and setting captives free. Father, you said that my assignment, your, you said that you came to to set the captives free. So I pray for every person that is bound this morning. I pray for every person in your family, maybe your son, your daughter, maybe your loved one, maybe your spouse, whoever that is. This morning, I come in agreement today that God will save and deliver and restore back to you sevenfold what the enemy has stolen. What the enemy has stolen for you, we declare that it comes back as a sevenfold harvest, as a sevenfold increase, as a sevenfold manifestation. May God begin to do the finished work of healing deliverance and restoration in your life. He is a deliverer. Deli Listen, the children's bread is deliverance. So father, give us this day, our daily bread, our daily deliverance, Lord, that you would deliver us from every form of evil, deliver us from temptation, deliver us from the lies that the enemy has set about our family has set about our body, has set about our business, has set about our ministry in Jesus name. We declare that it is so that he has already set you free. Who the son has set free is free indeed. So we declare that you are liberated by the blood of the lamb, that you are liberated by the power of the cross, that you are resurrected by the power of a conquered grave. We declare in Jesus name that everything about you, everything around you, it will be blessed and it will prosper. Prosper. We declare this morning that you have the faith to receive what God has in store for you. He can't be, he cannot be limited. He cannot be minimized. And no matter what the culture, no matter what people think, I declare in Jesus name that God has great thoughts that he thinks towards you. Jeremiah 29, 11, but the Lord says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. So father, we receive your thoughts toward us as a good father. As we, we receive your thoughts toward us as a deliverer, we receive your thoughts toward us that will set us free from every spirit, from every demonic principality. We declare in Jesus name, every principality, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places that come against your family, come against your life, come against your business, your ministry, your purpose. We bind it today. Huh? And we loose right now the glory of God in your life. May the glory be manifested in your life that you don't sweat by your brow, but that you work according 
to your faith. So work out your faith today. As we pray today, we pray for our nation. We pray for America. We pray for the United States of America. We pray from the White House to every house in suburban America, in the hood, in the city. We lift up every city today that's represented. I pray for your city, we, whether you are in South Miami or whether you're in Boston, Massachusetts, whether you're in Virginia or whether you're in Los Angeles, wherever you are. If you're in the South, the North, the East, the West, if you are in Africa, wherever you are, Kenya, no matter where you are, I send this prayer to your city and I pray for your leaders. I pray for the government of your city. I pray right now for those we stand in the gap. The Bible says, pray for those that are in authority. So this morning, I pray for every mayor, every governor, every, uh, every commissioner, every police chief, every sheriff, every fire chief. I pray for those that are in authority, every judge in Jesus name. God, we pray uh, for those that work in the court system. We pray for those that work in the law enforcement as first responders. We lift up those that are called to serve and protect. We pray for sons and daughters in our military, those that are on the front lines, those that are in secret places. Lord, we pray for every mission today. Lord, we thank you, Father, that every mission will be successful. Lord, I lift up in this season the homeless, those uh, somebody you may be threatened uh, to lose your home. We pray for you in Jesus name. I feel that's for somebody uh, you don't know. Uh, where to go or what to do. You may be watching. You may be tuning in. Let me tell you this. There's nothing too hard for God. I just believe. So I come in agreement by faith. There's a law of agreement that takes place on this broadcast. So as we pray this morning, I pray in agreement that God will do for you beyond your expectation. We declare it exceedingly in your life, abundantly in your life. Let this be a day of abundance. Jesus Christ said, I came to give you life and life more abundantly. So today on this fourth day, on this Wednesday, we call that into your life. We call that into your purpose. We call that into your assignment. If you have a great assignment and you've been sitting on it, if you got a destiny, if you got a book, if you got a ministry, you got an assignment, we call abundance on it to stir in you that you go forth in Jesus name, in Jesus name, that you go forth with presence, with power, and with praise. When you begin to praise God in advance for what he's doing, for what he's already done and what he's going to do, there is something that begins to happen. Praise will attract your purpose and praise, praise will, will attract God's plan for your life. And so whatever it is that you're believing for in 2020 and beyond, may you begin to seek the Lord. Oh, I feel like teaching this morning that you begin to seek him steadfast, that you be immovable, abounding in much, be rooted and grounded in the truth of God. Let the truth of God be in your thoughts. And I pray the disciples said, how do we know God? How do we know uh, Jesus? How do we know Lord? When it's going to be the last days, he said, do not be deceived. So we pray that God will sharpen your discernment, that he will give you insight, that he will give you divine revelation pertaining to the mysteries of God. You can't come into the, the unknown. Watch this. When you can't, you can't know the unknown about your life without seeking him in prayer and not just praying. I'm going to say this praying in the spirit. You know, this is an hour. If you, if you believe and if you're filled with Holy spirit, I believe that this is an hour. You've got to activate your tongues. You've got to know this, that this is very important. There are some things that you can't get on to see praying in your known will always limit you. So to tap into the unknown, you've got to pray beyond what you know, Pray beyond your understanding. Pray beyond your revelation. See, what happened is we've boxed God and we've limited God to one particular way that he's going to move. Let me tell you, I believe that we're good morning, everybody, as you tune in. I believe that in this year of 2020, we're going to see God move in a phenomenal way. You can't write down and even articulate the way he wants to move in your life. You've got to have it revealed to you. See, the unknown <laughs> you got to understand this. You can't study the unknown. It must be revealed to you. So I just pray that in these revelation moments, God begin to reveal to you. I pray this morning for Kim, Mama Billy. We pray uh, for those that are going into surgery this morning. Father, I thank you that this surgery uh, for Kim is already done. 
over her legs, over her body. I pray right now, Father God, that you are already moving even upon uh, the room. You're moving upon the process. Lord, as you're prepping her, we thank you, Father God, that it is already done. We declare, we call her name. Uh, on this broadcast, we call and lift her name before your throne. And Father, let our prayers come before you as a sweet smelling aroma concerning every prayer request, concerning every person, concerning everything in this day. Lord, we know that you are penetrating for results this morning because the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man avail much. Great morning to you. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We bless you. Uh, and we lift up his name. Great morning to you, everybody. As you are tuning in, we want to welcome you. We pray in this season of focus um, that you will begin to not allow distractions uh, to hinder you, to stop you. We pray that you continue to put your mind above. Uh, we know this, um, that, that God wants to elevate your thinking. He wants to lift you higher about where you are, no matter where you are, no matter what your growth is, no matter how long you've been uh, in the Lord. We've all we all needed a time of lifting up. And so may the Lord begin to exalt you today and uh, cause you to rise above your circumstances and situations. All right. Bless the Lord. Everybody, as you're tuning in, go ahead and do me a favor. Invest, invite and involve someone in this broadcast. If you haven't joined Revelation Moment and you're watching this on somebody's page, do us a favor. Go to Revelation Moment with Jermaine T. Johnson and be a part of this broadcast. Let me share a scripture with you today. Uh, our thought for today is one thing. Uh, we're still this week. Um, we're just giving you nuggets on eliminating distractions. And uh, we want you to go into uh, this new season, into this new decade. Uh, uh, distraction free distractions are going to come. It's how we conquer them. It's how we overcome them. It's how we see a distraction. See, a lot of times you've got to begin to see your distractions as stepping stones. As God promoting you, as God elevating you, as God lifting you. Or are you with me this morning? Sometimes you've got to put your distractions under your feet. Uh, when you put them under your feet, it is for elevation. It is for promotion. Some of us will never go higher until you conquer your giants, until you conquer your Red Seas, until you conquer your Jericho walls. Great day, everybody. Welcome into Revelation Moment. This is your Revelation Moment for this morning. And I want to encourage you in the one thing. Let me give you this scripture this day. Uh, greetings, everybody. Thank you so much. Uh, for tuning in and being a part of the broadcast today. And we're going to read from Philippians, if I can. There it is. Philippians chapter 3, um, verse 13, right down there, right? Right here. Yeah. Or, yeah, over here. Philippians 3, 13. Great morning, Michael Smith. Good to see you on this morning, brother. Philippians 3, 13. I want to read this to you and give you this uh, scripture. And then we're going to talk about the one thing. Uh, the scripture says it very clearly. One thing I do. I want you to make that declaration. If you have begun to journal, if you have begun to write, uh, if you haven't, I want to encourage you. Uh, this is a season that you've got to begin to write. Uh, you've got you can't just be an author, but be a scribe. Write what the Lord is saying. Uh, Revelations 1, uh, 19, chapter 1, ver verse 19, it says, write, write what you see. Write what you what you have seen. When you write what you have seen, some of the things that I have uh, I'm writing. I'm going back listening to messages over the decade from our apostle, Apostle Rennie and a lot of great teachings over the past 10 years. I've been going back and I've been listening and I've been watching some messages to write down. So some things that I've heard, even through there are some notes uh, or some messages you've got to go back and write down. You've got to write down what God has said, because there are some nuggets we have missed that may have. Uh, helped us in this season, but we want to take them even into the next decade because how many of you know it's the latter and the former that brings the glory of God. I don't have time to stay right there, but it, when you when you go back to the latter and you begin to document and you begin to write what he has done in your life, it's a reminder. It's a stepping stone. And so I want you to be, begin to compress your latter and your former into one thing. 
Uh, we've got a lot of things that we can do. Listen, I'm a multitasker. I'm a multi-gifted um, person, but you know, I'm moving into a season. The more I mature in the Lord, I'm, I'm realizing I've got to narrow down uh, what God is putting in me. And so I want you to do that. Your one thing. What is the one thing you do? That is the question. As you see the scripture there, it says one thing I do. If somebody asks you, what is the one thing you do? The one thing is the one thing. One thing is so important in this season because you can do a lot of things. See, a lot of us, we're all over the place. If you're a creative, I'm a creative, right? I can take anything, everything. Uh, you know, there's a list of things I love to do. But what is the one thing? that God is putting in you. He's putting on you. If you, if you're a leader, whatever you are, if you're a business owner, uh, I believe that this is the most profound thing that God can be saying to us in this season. Narrow it down. Oh, this is good because he says, forgetting what lies behind and sh watch this and, and doing this straining forward to what lies ahead. Now, one, one scripture may say pressing forward to what lies ahead. Now, I want to give you this thought this morning because it's very important. When we think about the one thing, in other words, focusing on the one thing that you do, whether whatever it is that you do, you've got to look at that one thing and you've got to eliminate and you've got to extract and you can't do what everybody else is doing. You've got to do what you've been purposed to do. Let me say it like this. When you've been bought, brought into the kingdom for such a time as this, or such a time as this is one thing. Esther was brought in for one thing and one thing only. Some of you don't even realize when you focus on the one thing, that one thing is going to set a generation or is going to establish a legacy. It is going to break more yokes. Look, when you begin to focus on your one purpose, your one assignment, what is it that is your one thing? I'm glad you asked because in order to have the one thing, you, the Bible says, another translation says, forgetting the past. When you forget your past, in other words, there are some things you cannot bring into your season. There are some people you cannot bring into your season. I want, to get, I want you to get this this morning. In order to forget what lies behind, you've got to forget your past. You've not, don't erase it, but you cannot hold on to it. Uh, some of us have got to go into the trunk of the vehicle of our journey and take out some weight, you know. If you go to some people's trunk or their car, it is full. And how many of you know it ain't full of glory? It is full of stuff that you don't use. It is full of stuff you need to throw away. See, a lot of times we're going into new seasons. We're going into, you can't go further because you're carrying weight. <laughs> My gosh, the one thing. It causes you to focus when you're on a journey. You focus on the road. You put your mind on God. Let me give you uh, something that has been a challenge for me in the in the past few days. I've been trying to do is when I get in my vehicle, um, turn my phone off. Just totally, totally turn it off. It has been a struggle um, because what happens is. I realize getting into your car, you've got to focus on one thing. And that focus is to get to your destination safely. See, a lot of times we journey into new seasons, into, into new hours, and our mind is on a lot of things. It's on the radio. It's on this. But if you're going to hear from God, if you're going to focus, if you're going to be able to establish and hear what God is saying to you, you've got to hear what he's saying and you got to hear it from one perspective. You got to allow one thing to be in your life, forgetting what lies behind. Or it, can I say it like this? You've got to have one compelling focus. Um, the Passion Translation, it says, it uses the word having one compelling focus. What is your compelling focus? What are you focusing on today? What 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 drives you? What makes you hunger? I am not just talking about watch this. I, that's good this morning. Um, Dania unclutter. What is it that you need to some of us don't realize we you can't hear from God because you have cluttered your mind with so many resources through social media. Social media is great, but I'm going to say that some of us need to take a social media sabbatical. Now, I know that's the only way you're probably going to get this message, but I, but you know, I do everything in my power 
um, to shut down after this broadcast for at least two or three hours to declutter my mind uh, of what this platform can do to you. So what you got to do is have one. What is it that compels you? Is your relationship with Christ that one compelling focus? I want to encourage you, beloved, that you've got to do it. You've got to have one compelling focus and you got to fasten to your future. I'm going to give you that thought as we wrap this up. It says, and straining forward. And I'm going to give you a quote this morning. I love this quote um, um, from Vince Lombardi. Vince Lombardi says this very clearly. Success demands, watch this, singleness of purpose. If you want to be successful, not just successful uh, uh, in, in your job, or, but successful in your family, successful in your spiritual growth, See, this is what prayer does. Prayer, if you want to be effective and successful, if you want to be uh, strengthened when other people are falling apart, if you want to be, you know what makes you an overcomer? It is understanding. Success demands, and look at that word, singleness of purpose. Some of us, I'm praying that you ask the Lord. Vince had a revelation. See, <laughs> Vince knew that. If, if my idea was to win a Super Bowl, then I had only one purpose, win a Super Bowl. And, and you got to understand, it's not maybe, it's not I hope, but it's a demand. What is it that is demanding a singleness of your purpose? What is it that is, see, sometimes you don't realize that the Lord is just looking for you to seek him and to make him first. I, and that, that's a, a lot of us, a lot of our questions are answered. A lot of strategies are given. See, you want to know what's next. You don't, you don't need to go to Miss Cleo or you don't need to go and get your palm read. But when you begin to set yourself apart, see, to be cut apart is to extract yourself from the culture. Oh, I'm going to give you some thoughts. Extract yourself from the culture. Extract yourself from the familiar, extract yourself from the confusion, the cult, the culture, the familiar and the confusion. What is the confusion? The confusion is what everybody else is saying. This is what this is what the Lord is saying to us this morning. Great morning, everybody. We just want you to step into uh, this one thing season. Uh, this is what the Lord has really said to you. He said, my sheep know my voice and another they will not follow. Let me ask you this season. Who are you following? Who who is becoming the voice uh, for this season? I got to wrap this up again. Going back to the scripture. What is your one thing? Your one thing is determined uh, by your single focus. It is determined by what you are putting first in this season. Uh, it's very clear. I'm going to say it again. You've got to have a one compelling focus. And you've got to fasten to the future. When you fasten to the future, you said, I'm going somewhere. There is something for me that I am on a journey to. I am not going to be sidetracked. I am not going to be minimized. I am not going to be stopped. I am not going to be limited. This thing is not going to kill me. It's not going to stop me. There are no barriers in where God is assigning me to. There are only, watch this. There aren't barriers. There are only borders. I'm going to say it again. Somewhere where God wants to take you, there are not only barriers, there are not barriers, but there are, there may be borders. See, some of us, uh, come on now, there are borders. Borders are not bad, but barriers can limit you if you don't have a single focus. Oh, I want to say it like this. And so I want you to, this in this season, begin to seek the Lord in prayer. I'm going to wrap this up. You've got to seek him in prayer. You've got to put in your plan time for prayer. You've got to write down. See, I, I, my journal, I'm at the end of my journal, right? This is, this is my last page today. You probably can't see it. But I'm like, this. I began this journal in 2019, and I'm at my last page. I have written so much. Every day, I have occupied a page. But one thing that has been on almost every page, this is my prayer. And so prayer is very key to becoming single mindedness in your life. In other words, removing a lot of the sound, removing a lot of the blockages, removing a lot of the barriers, removing a lot of the distractions from what God, let me tell you, find a quiet place 
and begin to seek the Lord. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways. This is a season. I, I don't know any other way to say this. You will never come into the unknown without seeking him in prayer. You will never see the unknown is that place where it requires a single focus, a compelling. I'm going to narrow down my thoughts to see God and see God alone. It's like this. I'm only I'm going to wrap this up right here. I'm going to give you this this last nugget. It's very important that you realize. I said it on yesterday. A lot of times our natural our natural thought is let me say a prayer. And God will answer it. But I'm going to tell you this. You've got to pray past your known. I'm going to keep saying it. You've got to pray past the place that you are familiar with. And doing that requires a single mindedness of seeking God, not just for your life, but what he has for your life and beyond. Because there are people that are waiting on you, but they're waiting on you to set yourself apart. So that God can speak to you. All right. I got to wrap this up this morning. I'm over my time. I pray that you've been blessed by this broadcast. Let me pray for you as we get out of here. If you're tuning in and you're watching, thank you so much for watching this video, this broadcast in its entirety. Now, Father, I pray this morning. I thank you for that one thing that you've given us. And I thank you for that desire. Father, there are some that may have many things but a God, I thank you that you are going to distinguish. You're going to identify. You're going to put that burning, compelling desire to only operate in this particular realm, in this particular assignment. Lord, I pray that what you're birthing and what you're cultivating in the lives of men and women today, in the lives of family, in the lives of individuals. Look, you may be, just have been laid back, but I pray that God will stir something inside of you that you will see the Lord, that you will see him high and lifted up. I pray that in this season that God remove your Uzziahs, that you will begin to see him high and lifted up as his train, as his presence, as his glory fills your life. May God remove every blockage. Every some, Sometimes we don't realize we've got some spiritual Uzziahs. We got some people, places, and things that have become uh, more than what God has desired to be in our life. So I pray that God will give you clarity. I pray, like Elijah prayed, that you will be able to see and that you will see that there are more for you than those that are against you. So I pray that God will give you clarity, that he give you a purity of your vision, but most of all that he gives you a singleness in this season to meditate, to focus on that which really, what really matters. All right. Again, this is your revelation moment for this morning. I am uh, Pastor Jay. We love you. There's nothing you can do about it. I pray that you have a wonderful Wednesday. I pray that it is a Wednesday, a wonderful Wednesday. Um, if you don't do anything, seek the Lord. Take time doing your lunch break. Take time to write. Take time uh, to create. Take time to design whatever you do. Do it all as unto the Lord. And as always, we declare over you this morning. If you're watching, if you're tuning in live, if you're watching it later, we're declaring over you today that your giants are defeated. Your Red Seas are open and your Jericho walls are coming down. We're praying with you, praying for you. Send us your prayer requests. We believe in standing in the gap for you. Be encouraged, be strengthened and be strong uh, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. And amen. All right. Be blessed, family, and stay tuned uh, for more Revelation Moment. Bye for now. Shalom. Shalom.